Well, hi again. This is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and today I'm here with our development VP, uh, John Welsh, and then Mac, our, our company uh, future president also. Uh, and today we're going to talk about code reusability in SIS. And John, this is a, a something that as you go from a beginner to an expert level or advanced level in SIS, you do encounter this quite a bit, don't you? Yeah, it's one of the biggest complaints that people who uh, gradually progress along that curve tend to find is, uh, okay, great, I know how to do this now. I'd like to be able to reuse these things that I'm creating across many packages okay. instead of being limited to just one. Well, if you tell us about the options on the whiteboard then for a few minutes? Yes, absolutely. Right, let's go to the whiteboard then. So, John, one of the really hot topics around SIS developers, and one that really is painful to me, is really reusability in SIS. Uh, we have a lot of consultants, and they're going around creating hundreds of packages that look almost the same, except you know maybe for example they've got the source right here, and they've got oops, SRC, and they've got a whole bunch of stuff that they're doing, and really everything between here and here is the same. You want to trim all the columns. You want to add this extra logic around some security addresses every single time. But this logic is the same. Right. What kind of stuff can I do that, that this is different use cases for this, of course. We'll cover different use cases, what pros and cons, and when, when do I use each of these. But maybe the first thing is execute package tasks. What, what do you mean by that? Well, with the execute package task, um, basically I can take a chunk of control flow logic and wrap it up in its own package okay. and call it from other packages. And the key there is control flow logic. Exactly. Uh, so this center area here is not going to be addressed by that. Not, not so much. I mean, I can certainly call other data flows, but I don't have the ability to call portions of a data flow. Right, right. So as long as the schema look matches and all that, you can pass a table name in, perhaps. But right. overall in all, it's, it's great for saying uh, maybe I want to uh, run these one, this set of components over again. The nice thing about doing execute package tasks, which would be a best practice anyway. You, you want to make your packages nice and module anyway, don't exactly. you? Uh, that way you can work on the HR load while I'm working on finance load, and then we have one for unzipping the files, perhaps, that you, call, you and I both call in that case. Exactly. Cool. Uh, now, the, the solution that most people wind up going towards is really a copying and pasting solution. They'll create exactly. a template, and that template will have all the auditing framework in, perhaps, mm -hmm. and they'll just copy and paste that in. So what are the pros and cons of this approach? Um, well, the, the pro is if you have a good solid template and you use it religiously and everybody on your team uses it every time they create a package, then it can save you a lot of work. Okay. Um, the downside is because it is effectively a shortcut for copy and paste, you're creating many, many, many copies of exactly the same thing. Right. So when the day comes that you want to update your auto framework or tweak some handling on the way something's being done, you don't have one place to go update that. You've got 150 ah, places to go update it. And that, 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 that sentence right there is why we created the Express Auditing Framework. <laughs> exactly. I, when I was doing a project around uh, an auditing framework, I had to update that code across 100, let's see, about 600 packages. And because the sarbanes Oxy had to go and update it about 12 different times, right. the auditor says, well, I really want this column also. And I want this <laughs> column now. And they couldn't quite figure out the law of mint at the time. So, yeah, this is, a, this is great for getting started, but it also is painful in some cases also, yeah. uh, which takes us to automation. Now we're getting a little more complex, but a little bit more yeah. uh, robust also. What does this mean? So automation is the idea of using the SSIS API. They have a full uh, API in .NET that you can use to actually programmatically either generate packages okay. or update packages, which is, as you mentioned, exactly what the BI Express audit framework does. Is it leverages automation interfaces to go programmatically update an entire set of packages so that right. you don't have to do it by hand. So we've also done this in the, our package builder feature and our snippet feature. A lot of different reusability features we have put in BI Express. And it's all about automation. It's not the right. easiest thing to do in the world. It, it can um, have its challenges. Yeah. The, uh, the API is not necessarily um, written for mere mortals, but, <laughs> but it can be done. And, and uh, as time's gone on, there's a lot more examples of how to do it out there. Right, right. There's some great uh, coding examples on, on codeflex.com, for yeah. example, as well. Uh, custom components. I like this I like this option as well. So let's say, for example, we can find a way to take these three components and say, this is all around encryption, mm -hmm. for example, uh, encryption. I can't spell today. And let's make an encryption component, perhaps, a third party, another third party, right. a, a corporate component that we own 
that is used to cross 100 packages. So we would create one transform in this case, right? Is that how you mean by, by So Yeah, it could be the combination of things. It could be a very complex transform that you're doing in script today. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with using script is it's still a separate copy of the script in every package. So you can take that, turn it into a custom component, and then you have basically one assembly or DLL that you update and all the packages immediately benefit from. Gotcha, so the encryption or standard data cleansing and those kind of things. Pretty much any operation that you want to do, you can do custom tasks, custom connection managers as well. So uh, most of the things in SSIS, um, if they fall, happen to fall in the ca this category, you can actually implement your own custom version of them. Which is great because this is actually where we, we wrote Task Factory, one of our third party products, is all around the, creating about 40 different types of components like this mm -hmm. to kind of help you with the automation. One of the components we wrote was something called a nugget. Uh, it's something like a goofy name at first, but what, is, what does this nugget mean to, uh, to people watching this video right now? So um, the idea of a nugget is that I can do exactly what you have up here. So, uh, and we actually have support for nuggets, um, not just within Task Factory, but we also support it within BI Express. Okay. Um, BI Express is a little closer to the copy and paste reuse. It's a design time ability to leverage things, whereas Task Factory is actually um, a runtime reuse. Okay. So, effectively, what a nugget lets you do is say, I've got this chunk of transformations. These are going to be common. I'm going to use these in tons of data flows. Um, I know that I'm going to have some updates to these. Uh, maybe they're not something that lend themselves to doing a custom component for. Okay. So what I can do in a nugget is use a special placeholder source and a placeholder destination. And I define uh, my set of components here okay. between those. And then the nugget um, in another package. I can it's a in consumer package in this case. A consumer package. I'm going to have a new source. This is the actual source. Yes. This is this is the real data. This is basically <laughs> stub data. Stub data that says here's the types of columns that you're going to be dealing with, mm -hmm. but not the specific uh, information. Okay. So between this, I would actually insert a nugget transform, and what happens is at runtime we physically go in and take this nugget transform out and replace it with whatever ah. is defined here. So because of that, we have to create a special execute package task. So as you call this, this package, it will replace all this logic. And the nice thing about that also is if I change this logic right here, that my nugget or my components that are using that nugget will also change. So exactly. It's, it's, so I make the update one place and everything benefits from it. So it's all, it is more closer to that reusable lo re logic and less the copy and paste logic that exactly. I was hoping to get after. Well, cool. Is there anything else you want to share with us? Uh, no, I think that's it. Uh, we're really excited about the nugget stuff. I think it, it changes how you design your SSIS packages, knowing that you can actually reuse chunks of common. Absolutely. So our consultants right now that we're developing those hundreds of packages before are starting to use nuggets now. It makes it much, much more efficient. Yes. And uh, they can download that from pragmaticworks.com. Uh, you go to the products and Task Factory, you'll find uh, nuggets under BI Express and Task Factory. Again, in BI Express is more of a design time feature, and uh, it's a runtime feature inside Task Factory. Well, hope you enjoyed this, and uh, please let me know if you have any ideas around reusability also in your own environment by adding these comments to the uh, the area below as well. Thanks so much for joining us, and thanks, John, for having a for having a conversation with me today. No, no problem. Thank thanks. you.